hello and welcome to this video. You are wondering what's the difference between software engineering and embedded software engineering? Then stay tuned, we will find out in today's video. But before we do that, let me first introduce myself. My name is Florian, I'm a computer science professor. I've worked in software engineering for more than 20 years now. I have managed a team with more than 100 software engineers distributed globally that did primarily embedded software, but I have also developed web applications, apps, and so on. So I can talk about what are the differences between developing web applications, applications, and embedded software. So let's find out what the differences are. But before we do that, let's first talk about what are embedded systems? Well, embedded systems are computer systems that are embedded into a larger mechanical or electronic system and do there a dedicated function. It can be the microcontroller in your coffee machine. It can be the microcontroller in your Nest thermostat. It can be the microcontroller in your AirTags, in your AirPods, but it can also be the control unit in your car that is protecting you when you have a crash and is deploying the airbag, or it can be a flight controller in an aircraft or a spaceship. So that's all embedded systems. Now let's find out what's different in the life of an embedded software engineer compared with a normal software engineer that is working more on desktop web development or apps. The first thing that is different if you are an embedded software engineer, you still need to have some understanding of the hardware. You still need to be able to read a schematic. You need to be able to understand what the circuits on the outside of your microcontroller are doing. You might need to solder something from time to time. You might need to do some measurements with a logic analyzer, for instance, and analyze the signals that you are seeing there. And this is something where usually when you are a normal software engineer, you don't do, right? When you are doing app development, you don't have to know how the iPhone is really working internally or how the Android phones that you're working with are really working internally. You are also not soldering the iPhone to make it work or uh, measure digital signals within the iPhone to explore how it's working, right? So that's one difference. You, you need to know much more about the hardware you're working with than as a normal software engineer. The second key difference is that a lot of embedded systems are safety critical. Safety critical means that if there is a bug or a malfunction of the system, you might actually harm or kill people. There are not a lot of apps or web applications that can kill people or harm people directly with a malfunction or with a bug. And that's definitely a difference. That's also why on the process side and on the testing side, you might see things in embedded systems development that you don't do when developing web applications or apps. Another thing that we find quite often in embedded systems is that we have real time properties, which means they really need to be fast and they need to do things in real time. With those real time constraints, there come a couple of issues. One is that debugging is very hard because you can't just set a breakpoint and then stop wherever you are because that would slow down the real time, right? Then you are out of this real time cycle. It's also the case that a lot of things you can't really observe during debugging. So it might be that you need to measure things with logic analyzer, that you need to set trigger points there and then measure something and then look at it later rather than observing how your application is actually running. And then another difference is there are a lot of limitations, especially on the resource side. While for web development or also app development, memory, CPU, is not that big of an issue anymore because it basically is available. 
for embedded system that's still a constraining factor. It's still necessary to make sure that you don't use a lot of memory, that you are really optimizing your memory usage. The same with CPU load and sometimes even power consumption. Think about IoT devices like an AirTag, right? There you have this built in battery, so you need to be very cautious on how much power you consume. Otherwise, you're dramatically changing the battery life of the device. And that's not really something that you pay a lot of attention to during web development, for instance, because the power is basically for free because every web server has continuous power supply. So yes, embedded systems or embedded software engineering is different from normal software engineering, but it's also a lot of fun. So you should check it out. I've also made a video about how to become an embedded software engineer, what you need to learn to be an embedded software engineer. So check that out as well. If you found this video interesting, then please smash the like button. And if you're interested in software engineering topics, if you want to take your software engineering career to the next step and grow as a software engineer, then please subscribe to the channel so that I can see you in the next video.